Hi, and welcome to our service. Here are your announcements for this week. All of our regular announcements for Sunday school, Sunday services, Bible study, and our prayer line are in the description box below, so please be sure to check those out. Also, we do have a couple of special announcements. The first special announcement comes from the missions department. The missions department is asking for donations. Agape Community Church has been afforded the opportunity to host a cottage for women who suffer from domestic violence. We are asking that donations be $50 or more so that we can furnish this cottage in order to make it feel more comfortable for these women as they escape their abusers. If you can't afford to give $50, any donation is appreciated. We wanna make sure that we can provide a comfortable place for women to be able to escape their abusers and also begin a new life. The way that you can give is you can give through the church app under the giving tab and you select missionary fund. And then you will also select women of domestic violence. Another way that you can give is if you donate during one of our church services and what you can do is you can either write on the check in the memo section, women of domestic violence, or you can also write that on the envelope. Anything that you donate is greatly appreciated and we pray that the Lord continue to bless you for giving into the kingdom. Our second announcement is regarding membership and voter information. So our senior pastor election day will take place on Sunday, June 6th, and we will be voting for the new senior pastor at Agape Community Church. Voting will take place at both the 8 a.m. service and the 11 a.m. service and members must be present to vote. The voter eligibility is based on whether or not the voter is an Agape member. You must be present to vote with the exception of the sick and shut-in and voters must be at least 18 years old on or before June 6, 2001. Members who joined Agape on March 1st, 2021 or later are not eligible to vote. Absentee voting will be on Saturday, June 5th, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the sick and shut-in, the elderly, and members unable to attend an in-person Sunday worship service due to underlying medical conditions. This will also include members who either work on Sunday or plan to be out of town during the, the day of voting. For more information on absentee voting, please call 661-341-1333 for more information. Voting will be done by written ballot at both worship services on June 6. Members will vote for only one of the candidates for senior pastor. You must print your name and sign the ballot before pay placing it in the locked ballot box. You must only submit one ballot, one vote at one worship service. And our two candidates are Apostle Sandra Cooley Watson and Pastor Armando Jackson. The membership update deadline for voting is no later than May 30th, 2021. All of this information is on our church website, so if you need to look at it again, you can check it out there. Also, if you are interested in serving in either the media ministry, audiovisual ministry, or even the music department, please contact the Pastor of Worship Arts, Athena Bell, at 661-505-8626 and let her know what you're interested in serving. Now, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the service. Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he's able. Tell somebody else, he's able. Y'all ready? Exceedingly. Abundantly above all, all you could ask for can according to the power that works in you. Don't 
give up on God Cause he won't give up on you He's able How many believe it tonight? Yeah, yeah He's able Thank you Jesus Come on y'all, I need y'all to help me sing God God is able to do just what he said He would do He's gonna fulfill Just to keep 
everything flowing, flowing in my brain, you know. Uh, and sometimes I used to do the puzzles. The ones that begin, uh, it says start, and then you go through a whole labyrinth of things. You gotta take this, this, de this detour, this passage, just to get to the other side. And at the other side, it tells you that this is uh, the exit. But to find your way through this is, is difficult because a lot of times when you start, it's almost like you think you're going in a good direction, but all of a sudden it's a dead end. So then you gotta back up to where you first took that and find another a route in order to get to a steady flow of where you're going to the conclusion. So what I would do is I would start at the exit and then I will work my way back. I, I don't know, see like it works for me that way, but, but the big thing is this right here, is that when it comes to things of the Lord, you know, I like to start to where God has already promised us things. And boy, he's shown us what it's going to look like. That way it keeps my heart and it keeps my mind intact with him, in alignment with him. So we're going to do something similar to that this evening. I would like to read the scriptures just so that we can get it inside of us. And the big thing about it is, is to get it inside of us, keep it on the sticky side of your brain and in your heart. And I believe that it helps us a lot too. So we're going to read some of the scriptures just to get the juices flowing. We'll first come from Romans chapter 8, and we'll be reading uh, verses 12 through 18. So Romans chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 12. And it reads, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. 15. And it's also uh, God is also. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry Abba, cry out Abba, which is say Father. Uh, verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse 17, and of children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. Verse 18, for I consider, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is from the uh, New King James Version. And we got more scriptures to read. And they get shorter as we go. The next one. The next one will be coming from the book of Ephesians, and we'll be reading from chapter one. So I want to read the scriptures and we can get them, and then we can, at least you can identify with what the uh, message is this evening. So that'll be uh, Ephesians chapter one, starting at verse 10. So it say, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Verse 12. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Verse 13, 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, who is the guarantee of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. It's looking beautiful to me. I mean, just like music to my ears. An inheritance. Amen. In the last, uh, in this segment will be 
from 2 Timothy, and this will be verses 8 through 10. And it reads, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prison, prisoner, but sure of me in the suffering of the gospel according to the power of God. Verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. In verse 10, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Amen. And the title of this message will be Seven P's. P is in precious for finding stability in unstable times and events. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished uh, for us, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for him, Lord God, and we, we celebrate his life with us, Lord. Father, we ask you this evening, Lord God, that you may uh, bless your word, Lord God. Father, we just ask that you may solidify it in our hearts, Lord God, that it be something that we can think about, Lord God, from this time forward on, Lord. We just pray, Lord God, that you magnify your word in us, and Lord, help us to celebrate what Jesus Christ has done, Lord. Until we see him again, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, uh, in 1961, the Shirelles, they did a song. The four of them. It was called, My Mama Said, There'll Be Time, There'll Be Days Like This. There'll Be Days Like This, My Mama Said. Amen. I'm pretty sure that they, in their time, felt like it was challenging. It was a lot that they were going through, and they recognized. But you know, since that time, we have seen so many things that happen in our world today. I mean, I see many people with the love of God in their heart. And I tell you what, I am so gratefully thankful to the Lord that there are such people, that are loving people, caring people. And you know, and the Lord uses them in magnificent ways. And I'm even impressed that they can still smile and they can still rejoice even through these tumultuous times. They still do it because that's what God has placed in their heart, to be loving, to be kind, to also give a smile and to give encouragement. These are the people, I'm going to tell you, I adore the Lord and I adore what he's doing through uh, such people, you know. And But now, there are such things that we do get challenged with. I mean, challenges everywhere. And we've seen it in our time. We've seen COVID-19 that hit us in 2020. You know, so that right there was, was a great challenge for many of us. And a lot of people had to endure a lot during these times. And the thing is, is that these events, they're not, they're not, a, not the last of things. But you know what I like about it is that God gives us power. He gives us grace. He works in us and through these events to get us from one place to the other that we're dealing with. That's because that's the power of the living God to do such things. And you know, and I am gratefully thankful for what he's doing. In him, we find our stability in these times. And you know, starting with the seven Ps, I would like to start out with purpose. Purpose is one of those things that I think many people search and seek. What is my purpose in life? What is my purpose? And you know, it has troubled many people. But as a believer, I'm here to tell you this. Purpose, the main and primary part of purpose is to have that relationship and fellowship with the Lord. That is the main and primary purpose. When we look in the book of Genesis, it tells us that when he created them, first of all, he wanted to create them so that he can have sons and daughters. That's what he did it for. Now when he did it, when he did it, he provided everything. He provided a paradise garden, right, where they can eat as much as any, any time they want. All these variety of trees they can choose from. So they can do it. Now there was one tree specifically mentioned that was very essential to their walk with the Lord. And that tree was a tree of life. And he really wanted them to eat from that tree. 
because of how he provided everything. Waiting for the moment when they would eat from that tree, which means that now they would have a life with him. Because this tree, if they ate this tree first, they would have had that life that they needed in order to do what God already called them to do, which is to take dominion over everything in the, in the sea, in the air, and everything across the land. They would have had the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, everything they needed in order to do that. And they would have been to him, sons and daughters, who are talking to him and just enjoying his company would have been a great thing. But now, he couldn't force them to eat from the tree of life. But what he did, he made everything available for them to do that. And they didn't, of course. They chose death instead. They stole them. They, it wasn't like he gave them a choice. <laughs> you can choose this. No, he didn't, he didn't tell them to choose them. As a matter of fact, he said, do not take this. Because that tree alone, as I see it, when looking back, I see it, it was for Jesus. But anyway, so they did. But see, now God rolled up his proverbial sleeve, and then he began to do something different. Because they started at a time of rest. They started at a time where there was nothing else needed, right? Because they had everything they needed. You know, just like an artist, when an artist paints a picture, and when he put all the br uh, brush strokes in that picture, he said, well, it's a final product. I'm finished. It's, I'm done. It's perfect in, in the eyes of the, uh, of the art of the painter. And he's done. Just like in music, the composition of music. When the instrument, certain times, they play certain parts in the music, but they might have a rest. It's called a rest. It's not because the, uh, the, the instrumental is tired. You know? It just means that he don't have a part in that particular thing, and so he's, it's called a rest. But when it's time to play again, yes, he play again. But it's a rest. God rested, not because he was tired, but because everything was finished. Right? And that's why he did. So uh, but when they did what they did, of course, he had to roll up his proverbial sleeve, and he had to get them from point A to point B because he still wanted a relationship. He had lost that. And even though, one thing that reminds me of how this thing is, I used to like, like to watch cowboy westerns. I, I mean, uh, one big one to me was Bonanza. You know, you, you had Ben, who was the father, right? And he had um, three sons. Right, he had he had Jerry, he had uh, Hawes, and he had Little Joe. Well, the thing about it is, they also had ranch hands. They had ranch hands, which they would they would be cow pokes, and they would uh, also take the cattle to um, on runs and stuff like that. Now, in this household, and they of course hop seen because he was the cook. But see, the big thing about it is, is that uh, even before he had them, he always had workers. Right? To do the work around the ranch, because it was a large ranch. He was rich, so it was a large, large ranch. So now, the way I see this, as far as in our relationship is concerned, the uh, ranch hands, they were not in line to receive an inheritance. They were workers. But now he had the sons that are scheduled because they are his sons. They would receive an inheritance, what the father had. So that's why he saw them as different. Just like the angels, they're powerful. One angel has to have the power to destroy the whole planet, but, but he can't do it willy nilly because God is still in control of everything. So, but now, the way it works is, is that he wanted sons and daughters too. And so, even though uh, uh, Jared, Haas, and Little Joe, even though what they would do, they would do like the ranch hands. They would also rustle the cows, they would go on drives just like them. Just like us, the angels praise God, we praise God too. But now there's something special that God has for us. A relationship with fellowship with him. It's always like he's, he's out, not just father, but he's out daddy. Well, have you ever seen kids that love their, their, their father? They can jump on him and get on his chest so close they can hear his heartbeat. Daddy, you know, I mean, that's what kids are. Loving and innocent. They, they love their father, especially when he loves them and, and do something thing for them. They recognize this. So this is the same way it is with God and with, with everything that's created. But now, when you look in the Genesis, you see uh, uh, Father Abraham, him and Sarah. They, now, Father Abraham, he wanted children. He didn't have any children, but he wanted a child to give his inheritance to, right? That was a big thing for him. And that caused him to be sad because they couldn't have children at the time. But God made sure that he gave them children. So that's the number one purpose. But now, we also have other purposes in this earth that God wants to fill through us. And I, you know, I tell you what, I admire people 
They wear so many hats in life, in this life, and then, I mean, they be multitasking, and their purpose, it, it, it's no, it's like no end to their purposes, you know. But God has given them, God has blessed them with a lot. And they can, they're doing their purpose. I'm impressed with what they can do, especially with the time they can do it, and especially with the challenges that they face and the challenges that they also meet. But it's the power of God working in life in order to accomplish these things. So purpose, important. Okay, the next thing is a plan. God has a plan for all of our lives. Every person that is born uh, under the sun has a, God has a plan, purpose, and then a plan. But now, people don't always know the plan of God, uh, but he do have a plan, right? And then now, the next thing is a, is a promise. When God gives a person a promise, that means that God has already looked at this thing back or forward, sideways, and he know how, what I'm gonna be thinking, what I'm gonna do. Now, now promises are in two parts. Some parts, um, God make a promise. It's one, it might be where you have a big part, and it'll say, he might say that, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. So the part of the, us is, that we gotta keep our mind stayed on him, and be in perfect peace. But there's also a promise that is not contingent on what, for us. I mean, because we're believers, if we're his children, right? There are certain promises that are going to be fulfilled based upon our relationship with Jesus Christ. Those promises, you know, they're, they're guaranteed. They're not something that we, he already know how we're going to respond to every situation. So when he makes that promise, that because he's already got the plan, and he's also just letting us know part of the plan that he's doing. So amen on that, his promises. And his promises cannot be stopped. Amen. Now, when he makes this promise, we're, as people, we're going to run into problems, you know, a lot of times. But see, that problem is not to stop us. Right. The problem that we face is designed to continue to trust God. How do we respond when we meet these, these problems? Well, we go back to the, to the first part. First of all, we have a purpose, and that purpose is main our relationship. God has a plan. He's also made a promise. So I got to focus on my promise that God made to me, right? Because see, what I'm beginning to learn, how I'm beginning to grow, is that God is all powerful. God is bigger than, than I've even seen. But if I'm trusting his promise, God is even magnified. He even looks bigger because when he fulfills his promise, then I know that, look, God is able to do these things. I might not be in, in the business of doing this because he might make a promise to me I cannot fulfill. You know, it's something that he's going to have to do because I cannot do it. So I'm going to give you a promise. Amen. So I see God definitely when I see that uh, problem because I look at it and I say, nope, I'm going to consider what God has said. I'm trusting him regardless of the problem. Amen. So my faith is also growing. As a matter of fact, it said without faith, it's, it's impossible to please him. So he's pleased when I'm trusting him. I'm trusting him. I'm looking at God as a big God. He's bigger than my problem. He's bigger than anything I could ever face in life. Amen. So then now, he's going to provide for me. So now I've learned that, that he gave me this promise, and now he's seen me through this, uh, seeing me through this promise by giving me provisions that I didn't have. So now his provisions are able to meet whatever problem that I'm faced with. Provisions, man. He is a, he's a great provider, amen? Amen. He is the promise keeper too. So now I have provisions in order to see through what God has promised me. And then the next thing is praise. See now, praise is one of those things that you want to thank God for. You make sure, Lord, you are one almighty. You are great. You are awesome, Lord. He is, hey, praise him. Because the more we praise him, when we see what he has accomplished, and then it's we're more out to praise him the next time when we see a problem. As a matter of fact, as soon as we see the problem, we start praising him because he's already got a plan. <laughs> he know he's going to see us through this, you know. Amen. Because look, he's already proven himself time after time again. So now uh, we can praise him even when we see the problem. Amen. Praise. And so, amen. And then another one, the last one, is power. And this power, we begin to understand how powerful and how big God is. Because God is not a little God. He's a big God. He's everywhere at the same time, as a matter of fact. He's everywhere. He sees and knows everything. You know, I always had people that would say, that look, uh, I don't know if I want Jesus in my life because he'll be seeing everything that I'm doing. 
I said, oh no, he sees everything that you're doing. You just need him to help you to be strong and to stand against the things that's happening in your life. That's why you really need him. So anyway, so that, that was a big thing. Uh, you see God's power. And so every time you see how powerful God is, you might have to worship him. You might have to praise him because he is an awesome God. And I just want to say that um, with these things that uh, if a person doesn't really know him, if a person doesn't know God, these are the times, especially during these times, to get to know him. To get to know him. And, and I know that uh, a lot of people also say that, well, you know, I've been so bad, you know, I, I, God don't want me because, I, you know, I've messed up so many times and, 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 and I can't see my way through this. You know, right? And so, I said, well, the thing is, is that God, first of all, he's powerful. Now, his blood is able to, to forgive and heal everything. I mean, so, whatever they're dealing with, I said, none of us, nobody was born perfect. As a matter of fact, we lost, that was lost in the Garden of Eden, but it was gained back through Jesus Christ on the cross. So, everybody who's received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have this inheritance. You know, right? We have a new um, a relationship and a fellowship with the law. But if a person has never received Jesus Christ, they're still an old Adam and until they come to Jesus Christ. And so the Bible tells us that, you know, there's not one, you know, that's perfect, you know. And then uh, we know that every sin that, that a person has dealt with, you know, yeah, it's, it's not a pretty thing. Uh, Romans 6, 23 said it, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. So in other words, uh, yeah, sin is a real thing. But that word, but, it's going to be eliminated by what's going to be said afterwards. See what I'm saying? So now it's like even clear to all the It's almost like, I don't know if you've ever rented an apartment or a house, but you know, you have your payment. So the thing is, it, it shows when you owe these different things for this place. And it's in, it's in black and white. You know, white paper, black ink. So the thing is, is that when you when you pay it, and if you can't pay it, somebody else pay it, you get that big big red stem right across the page. If they don't they don't want to look at the writing, what you owe, you see the red that comes here and everything else up. Amen. <laughs> the red, you know. And Jesus Christ, he paid the price. So his shed blood on the cross, it paid the price for every failure that we have ever had. Every mistake we want to call it, everything. He done prayed, paid that price. He said, it is finished, and it is done. Amen. And the way you receive, the way we receive it, the way everyone receives it, is in Romans 10, 9 and 10, where it says, with the, uh, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And we believe in our heart the Lord Jesus Christ, and that God raised him from the dead, and believe in our heart, we will be saved. It said, because with the heart, man believe unto the righteousness from the salvation, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So this is where we're at. So if a person doesn't uh, have a done that yet, as long as they have the breath of life in their body and want warm blood course through their veins, they can do this. But I do not recommend waiting because you never know, no matter person never know what tomorrow is going to bring. But if they can do it today, if they can receive Jesus Christ today into their hearts, this is where the whole matter is changed. This is where they have also inheritance with all of God's people. Amen. And, and God wants as many who will, who will believe to receive this, receive it. Amen. And I am so very thankful for what the Lord has done. So with that, I just want to say, let us continue to let the Word of God permeate through our hearts. Let the Word of God continue to, to make alive the Word of God. Let it be strong and solidified in our hearts as to what He is doing. Amen? So let's just praise God. I praise the Lord and thank Him for what He's doing. Uh, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I just pray that you, Lord God, will also seal up your Word in, in the hearts of the hero, Lord God. Let you, let, the, let you be magnified in all of us, Lord God. And Father, help us to receive your truth, Lord God. That, Father, that we may magnify you, or you may magnify yourself in us and through us, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name.
And now it is time for communion. I would like to say that uh, being Sunday, we have a communion day. Amen. And then communion is for those who have received Jesus Christ the Lord and say, and it shall forth the Lord's death until he come. Every time we have the communion, it's to be reminded of what he's already done for us. And he is in the midst of us. He said in his word that uh, wherever uh, two or three gathered in his name, so am I in the midst of you. And communion is one of those things that we remember. Uh, there are several scriptures that talks about communion. One is in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, but there's other scriptures about it. And the way it goes is, it's on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He said, take and eat. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Drink. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check the description box below for all the special announcements that we made and also for information on how to tithe and give. Also, if you decided to give your life to Christ today, please text your name and your address to 661-505-8626 and we'll be sure to get some stuff to you to help you on your Christian walk. Once again, we love you with agape love. We can't love you unless Jesus Christ loves you through us. Stay safe and have a blessed week.